Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, the uh, Women's Tennis Association CEO, Steve Simon, issued uh, this statement yesterday about uh, the treatment of Wimbledon champ tennis star Pong Shui, who accused a uh, senior apparatchik in the Chinese Communist Party of sexual assault. Since that uh, accusation, Pong, uh, Pong's message has been removed from the Internet and discussion of the serious issue has been censored in China. Chinese officials have been provided the opportunity to cease the censorship, verifiably prove that uh, Pong is free and able to speak without interference or intimidation, and investigate the allegation of sexual assault in a full, fair, and transparent manner. Um, but they've chosen not to do so. He writes, none of this is acceptable, nor can it become acceptable. If powerful people can suppress the voices of women and sweep allegations of sexual assault under the rug, then the basis on which the WTA was founded, Equality for Women, would suffer an immense setback. I will not and cannot let that happen to the WTA and its players. As a result, I am announcing the immediate suspension of all Women's Tennis Association tournaments in China, including Hong Kong. In good conscience, I don't see how I can ask our athletes to compete there when Pong Shui is not allowed to communicate freely and have and has seemingly been pressured to contradict her allegation of sexual assault. Yeah, did you watch that videotape? I, I wasn't buying it. No, it was a hostage tape. It was tape. a hostage tape, right. So, uh, good for the, them. The Women's Tennis Association and the newly named Ennis Cantor Freedom of the Boston Celtics, uh, what kind of impact, if any, can the all-important sports world have on the Chinese communists? To help us with that question... We're pleased to be joined again by Gordon Chang. He is the author of The Coming Collapse of China, as well as The Great U.S.-China Tech War. You can follow him at, on Twitter at Gordon G. Chang, C-H-A-N-G, Gordon G. Chang at, on Twitter. Gordon Chang, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Gordon? Are you there? Yes. Oh, oh okay. Hi, Gordon. Um, what about uh, the action taken by the Women's Tennis Association in the sh in the matter of Shui, as well as you know Ennis Cantor uh, becoming a high profile NBA player speaking out against Chinese repression? Uh, this is uh, a important step um, because it shows that the international community will not accept um, the behavior of China, which silenced Peng Shui and which disappeared her. Um, and I hope that other sporting organizations will do the same, including the International Olympics Committee, right. because they should move the games from Beijing. They start on February 4th of next year. Right. That's in a few months. That's what I was going to ask you. Why not stop there? We should, all, you know, other countries and our allies should just boycott the Olympics if they don't, because they're not going to move it. So we need to boycott it, don't you think? Or well, um, I think that they actually can move it. We have to remember that the Summer Olympics were actually delayed a year because of COVID. Uh, China right now has COVID. Um, and, um, of course, uh, there are a lot of other reasons to uh, move it, not only because of Peng Shui and the safety of athletes, but also because Beijing is committing genocide and other crimes against humanity. So for many reasons, I believe that the games should be moved. Uh, and yet it seems that... Um... The uh, Chinese communists under President Xi are tightening the screws on dissent and also uh, affecting their Belt and Road program. Uh, we noted the story earlier this week that uh, they have seized the airport in Entebbe because of debts unpaid by the Ugandan government. So their uh, efforts to make countries around the world dependent on them through debt uh, is 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 finding some success. Well, certainly the Belt and Road has become a debt, debt trap diplomacy. Um, Beijing and the Ugandan civil aviation authorities uh, deny that the airport has been seized, but we know that China has effectively seized the Henban Toda port in Sri Lanka. We also know um, other unusual uh, financial arrangements, uh, including the ones in Djibouti. Uh, which it owes something like uh, more than 100% of its gross domestic product to China. Um, there are so many reasons right now where China is moving in all the wrong directions. It is a bad actor in the international scene, but of course it has become increasingly repressive at home, and it is no longer merely authoritarian. It is moving back to totalitarianism, 
not quite all the way there yet. Xi Jinping doesn't quite have the power to do that at this moment, but he is certainly pushing Beijing and the rest of the country in that direction. Speaking of uh, hanky financial dealings, Miranda Devine, columnist of the New York Post, has a new book out on Hunter Biden's laptop called The, the Laptop from Hell, oh, awesome. in which he details uh, some of his uh, business uh, dealings with significant Chinese interests, including the, the uh, CEFC, the huge Chinese energy company. Uh, and uh, this is new. I mean, we, we know some of this, but at least this was new to me, that uh, there was a uh, uh, the, the, the chairman of CEFC gave Hunter Biden a three carat diamond uh, in addition to his 30 million dollar offer, 10 million a year over three years to, uh, you know, Uh, consummate their business relationship. And Devine again confirms that the 10 percent of these dealings with the Chinese communists were to be set aside for the big guy. And that would be our current president of the United States. Uh, Does this need a more uh, detailed and public going over the Biden family's relationship with these significant Chinese communist interests? Well, it certainly does, because Joe Biden, when he was running for president, promised that no member of his family would maintain relations with a foreign country. And what we have seen from Hunter Biden's relations with China, they can be described really into two different categories. One of them are relations that generally do not happen in the absence of corruption. That would be, for instance, his gaining of an interest in Bohai Harvest RST, which is the equity fund, Um, plus also... um, Uh, inappropriate um, business relationships, including um, the ones that Devine talked about with uh, CEFC uh, China Energy, um, as well as this cobalt mine in in the Congo, where Hunter Biden, while his father was vice president, actually arranged for the sale of uh, a minority interest in the cobalt mine to China at a time when cobalt was certainly going to be used for batteries and uh, Vice President Biden was promoting clean energy and electric car use. So his son was trying to take advantage of his father's policies. Clearly inappropriate. How much money did he make off of that deal? Do we know? Um, We don't quite know. The entire deal, I believe, was in this... um, and testing my memory was something like um, eight hundred million dollars, but I could be oh. I could be wrong on that. But the point is, um, I don't think it's been disclosed what Hunter Biden's share of the commission for that deal was. But we do know that he uh, had um, an interest in Bohai Harvest RST, which did arrange that deal. So um, whatever the money was, uh, it was clearly inappropriate. And as I mentioned, his gaining of the interest in that equity fund um, is type of deal, which is highly suspect, probably criminal. Let me feign naivete for a minute and ask, uh, you know, is this just the Biden business dealings, even the idea that uh, when when he was uh, out after the Obama administration, that Biden would get a cut of his action because he was obviously trading on his dad's political connections? Is this just, you know sort of slimy people looking to uh, rent seek their way to uh, riches and nothing more? Or is it not possible to do just financial dealings with Chinese communists, senior level Chinese communists, like the chairman of that huge energy concern, without also uh, being a tool for the Chinese to compromise American interests in, in a more significant way? Yeah, it it is clearly all of the above, um, because Hunter Biden was working against the national security interests of the United States. Um, It may not have been illegal um, or criminal, um, but clearly it was deeply inappropriate. And um, these are the types of relationships that need further airing, which is the reason why the Divine Book is so important. And it's so important that you're talking about this now. Um, because these types of relationships are clearly unacceptable. Here is somebody who had no business expertise ending up um, being enriched by the Chinese government and the Communist Party um, in ways which um, undermine, as I said, um, America. With with respect to um, uh, your previous book, The Coming Collapse of China, um, you know, I, I'm I'm I, I subscribe to your argument that, you know, the, the communist uh, 
contradictions, the internal contradictions in China are why they don't realize the strength of their numbers, the same way the Soviets' contradictions spelled their doom. But, but with the way the world is behaving uh, uh, as it pertains to China, a little bit different than we behaved with respect to the Soviet Union, at least during Reagan, those critical years. Um, is that coming collapse that you predicted being pushed off a bit? Well, it certainly was pushed off because in 2001, I, I predicted that the Communist Party would not survive a decade. So I was wrong about that. But what we are seeing now is a China which I believe is far weaker than people perceive. They've got a debt crisis for which they have no answer to. They've got a stagnant economy, one which may be contracting. They have a food crisis, um, an environmental crisis, unhappy people. And in the top of all that, to make all of this worse, China is losing support among the world because of its provocative and belligerent policies. And it stead, stands on the edge of a demographic decline, which will be the steepest in history in the absence of war or disease. China could be one third of its size by the end of this century. Um, so this is this is something which the world has not seen before. And I don't believe that the Chinese Communist Party, as capable as many people think it is, can navigate these simultaneous crises. Yeah, there was a report that there'll be uh, more adult diapers in use in China by 2025 than uh, diapers for babies. <laughs> I hadn't seen that, but yeah, that, that could very well be the case. I mean, well, China is graying, of course, um, and that is possible. Well, and, and but so, so I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, in terms of collapse, we're talking about something well into the future. And, it, and, it, and unlike sort of the opening of the Soviet Union by Gorbachev that was intended to forestall the collapse, but it actually accelerated it, uh, President Xi is going the other way. Well, he certainly is. Um, Xi Jinping, um, when he became general secretary of the Communist Party, in other words, China's ruler, Within about a month, he gave a secret speech to cadres in Guangdong province, which is in the southern part of the country, where he actually talked about Gorbachev and the fall of the Soviet Union. And as has been reported, he used the phrase that the Soviet Union didn't have a quote unquote real man. Um, and that's why it fell, um, because they lost their faith in uh, communism. And Xi Jinping made it clear that uh, he was going to push China back to something that was close to what Mao Zedong um, instituted. In other words, state-dominated economy, maybe even a fully state economy. And clearly he was going to impose more social controls on the Chinese people than did exist um, in 2012 when he became general secretary. So China is moving back to um, a totalitarian state. Um, not all the way there yet, but this is the clear direction. He is Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China, as well as The Great U.S.-China Tech War. You can follow him at Twitter, uh, on Twitter, at Gordon G. Chang, at Gordon G. Chang, C-H-A-N-G. Gordon Chang, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.